know what this it looks like to me is that it's another evolutionary step in the way internet has turned out to be a connector of people you know in the earliest days days of this networking phenomenon uh, even before the internet itself there were predecessor networks like the ARPANET who's a defense department research project but it's that started in 1969 and by 1971 email network email was invented and by Ray Tomlinson at Bolt Baranek and Newman the value of the email was instantaneously recognized by all the participants because we saw first it was a way of doing deferred communication and it meant that I didn't have to be up at the same time you were like you have to have with phone calls or frankly with instant messaging both parties have to be awake and functional so we could see the value of deferred communication to allow coordination across multiple time zones that's uh, after this uh, phenomenon you know, sort of hit the rest of the community mailing lists got created because it was an easy way to alert people to information so you type it once and it goes out to everybody that's on the list so you could see the immediate social phenomena arising one of the first mailing lists was called sci-fi lovers it was about people that enjoyed science fiction and they shared their you know interest in various authors and books then the next one after that I think was Yum Yum and it was started at Stanford and it was about restaurants. People would go to a restaurant, they liked it or they didn't like it, they would send to the distribution list their comments on that restaurant. So the social aspect of communication emerged very quickly even before the internet as we now know it rolled out in 1983. Um, and by the time we had the internet in place so that we had lots and lots of different kinds of networks all interacting with each other. Uh, another 10 years goes by and the World Wide Web shows up, thanks to Tim Berners-Lee and Mark and Dreesen and others. And that makes it easier for the general public to use these computer-based tools, which before were in the hands of the geeks. And so by 94, we're starting to see uh, a, the general public using these things. And now, you know, fast forward to 2008, uh, mobiles are now internet-enabled. Uh, everybody's got laptops or desktops or what have you. The younger and younger crew get access to these services because they're just there. This afternoon, uh, someone told me about his two-year-old using YouTube because he enjoyed, you know, yeah, I'm, I, I'm sitting here saying I need a t-shirt that says don't look back, there's a two-year-old gaining on you. And so the social aspect of communication and the facilitation that the internet offers in its various manifestations uh, is a constant and it's also something which is becoming um, increasingly facilitated for example um, the video conferencing is in many ways vastly superior to just telephone interactions or email or instant messaging part of the reason is that you've got a camera and the camera can look not only at the other person you're talking to but the camera can also show you what's going on around I'll give you a small example of this uh, I was in uh, Los Angeles a few months ago. My son lives in Hollywood, California, and my wife is in Washington, D.C. And uh, we set up a three-way video conference uh, using the um, instant messaging from um, uh, iChat from Apple. It's a really nice piece of work. So we have three people interacting with each other, each person seeing the other two <coughs> on the screen. And it wasn't just two little squares of images. <clears throat> the presentation made it look like, uh, imagine that the, how do I do this so you can see it, imagine that you're seeing a screen which instead of being flat looks like there's two people you know in interacting with each other. So you're seeing two faces here and here and of course they're seeing you and the other person. So my wife and I and my son are chatting and uh, she says would you like to see how the new fireplace is doing? Because we're building a fireplace in the basement. And so we said, sure. So she casually disconnects from the uh, electrical power supply. We're running Wi-Fi in the house. So she's just wandering down the stairs, and the camera is picking up everything. She gets down to the fireplace, rotates the computer around, gets a great shot of the fireplace. Now we're sitting here casually <coughs> uh, doing this video conference. And I got to thinking, my god, usually when you have a video conference, there are engineers crawling all over everywhere trying to get the video and the audio to sync up. Uh, or to get several different sites to work. This thing just worked. So the casual nature of the technology allowing this sort of rich interaction is the direction that we're heading in. And I think the other thing that's happening is that different um, 
internet access tools are becoming interworking, uh, interworkable. So my mobile will do instant messaging with someone who's sitting on a laptop somewhere. That's a new feature, new to me anyway, and uh, just increases my ability to stay in touch with everybody in a convenient way. So this social networking phenomenon uh, is all about communication. It's about friends. It's about family. It's about staying in touch with each other. It's about sharing common information that, uh, that you find interesting. And kids like that a lot. And so you're seeing a very heavy uh, motion towards social networking among the younger uh, kids. And it, seems it gets younger and younger as time goes on.